Thank you, thank you very much. I thank all of you too, Tafa Thank you very, very much. I just want to say that I was my talk. My name is Mahalke. My name is Dear. And I'm very proud and honored to be here today. I'm honored to be here with you, uh, with all of you on, on this very special day. It's a special day for you, like you mentioned, August 23rd. So I'm going to talk about another year, August 23rd. Okay, August 23rd, uh, <coughs> astronomically, okay. but historically, it was August 13th. So August 13th, historically, in 1521, 1521. Okay. So in 1521, August 13th, back then, it's not the same as August 13th now. Okay. In 1582, they made a change in the calendar. Okay. They took 10 days out of the calendar. 1582. They called it Gregorian, you know, uh, adjustment. So now we're in the Gregorian calendar. <clears throat> Excuse me. So today, August 13 is actually August 23 and so forth. So let me take you back to uh, August 13, 1521. So August 13, 1521, it was a day one serpent. One serpent on the ancient calendar. It was called the Aztec calendar. I'm talking about Mexico, of course, the Aztec calendar. But the day before that was August 12th, and that was a day 13 lizard. Okay, now we're going to travel in time. It came August 13th, one serpent. But on August 12th of 1521, a young man by the name of Cuauhtémoc, which means the eagle that descends, he was our last spokesperson, our, our last government, governor, you want to call him. But he was not a king, okay? They try to paint that we had kings and queens and stuff like that. We had no kings, no queens, none of that kind of stuff. At least in Mexico we did. But he was a, he was a portavoz, right? He was a tratoani. He carried the voice of the people. Why? Because he felt in his heart the people. Okay? But he was a spokesperson. So let's go back to August 12, 1521. Cuauhtémoc comes to, to the console like this. Beautiful console like this. With elders. Elder people, elder men, elder women, young men, young women, children, they're all part of the council. Okay? And he comes and he says, I have, I, I have bad news. I have bad news. Because this man does not know how to fight. He does not fight like a man. He, he destroys everything. He's talking about the invasion that happened in Mexico in 1520, 1519. 1521 now. He says, we can't fight with this man. He destroys everything. If we continue, there'll be nothing left. Everything will be destroyed. You know, what should we do? And he's talking to the council. And first the council, there's a lot of men in the council, and they say, well, you know what? We don't know, we, like, there's no work for a power here, right? We're going to fight to the last drop of blood. You know, we're going to defend our culture. We're going to defend who we are. The women in the group say, if there's no more men, we'll put on the dress of the men and we'll fight like the men to the last drop of blood. The children in the group say, the invaders are asking for food. Let's take them food. Let us fight to the last drop of blood. No, everybody was willing to give the last drop of blood to defend what was at that time Mexico City. What the Nostitla we call it. Okay? But a young grandfather said, we should not throw the seed into the fire. Okay. We should not throw the seed into the fire. We have to keep the hope alive. We know that one day the sun will shine on us again. One day the sun will look down and be dignified to return to us. We should not throw our seed to the fire. They began, they, be, they began discussing. They discussed all night, August 12th, the day of the living, 13th living. All night they discussed, and the next day, all day long, they were arguing. And some wanted to fight all the way, some wanted to, you know, to, to... Before this, there had already been talk about laying down the arm because of the massacre that was going on in Mexico at that time by the European invasion. So there had already been talk. So that's why our grandfather, young grandfather said, hey, you know, maybe, maybe there's an opportunity to stop the massacre. So, 
August 13 comes the next day, the day one serpent, the year three house. Okay? We have this calendar count. Okay? So on that day, at the end of the day, they agree. They say, you know what, young grandfather, they call him young grandfather. He was a young man. He was approximately 21, 22, 23 years old. But he carried on his shoulder all the weight of the future, us. And they say, grandfather's correct. So they ordered him to go hand over the arm. They ordered him to take the arms, you know, to, to lay down the arms, like he has suggested. Okay? That's very super important. Because they want to call this young man, Guatemo, they want to call him the king. King Guatemo. But who ordered the king around? Nobody. But the consul ordered him to go lay down the arm. So he, so he goes. He gets on his boat and he goes. The story is written in the Spanish writing, the European writing. They say they saw him coming at them. And they say, why is he coming at us when we're, we're chasing him down? But he's coming at him because he had a mission. So they grab him, they take him, they take away his arm. And they take him before Cortez, the European, the invader. And standing right before the Cortez, right before the European invader. He reaches over and he takes his knife from him. And he grabs his knife and he takes it from him. Imagine what you would have done, Big Brother B. Imagine what I would have done. Imagine what Chief would have done. Or a lot of other of us here would have done. If we had had that knife in our hands at that moment, you know. Okay? The most incredible moment in the history of the human humanity. But you know what he did? He turned it around and he gave it back to him. He said, so he laid down his arms. Okay? In other words, you know, I'm not Guatemoc. I would have done something else. I would have put it somewhere else, you know. Okay? But I'm not Guatemoc. But he had a mission. So he laid down That's super important. You know? And he says, okay, now my work is done. You can kill me if you want. At that time, the invader said, no, we don't want to kill you. We know who you are. We know that you got the secret to the treasures of this land. So give me the treasure and we'll, we'll give you freedom. And he asked, what treasures do you want? What treasures do you want? You want to talk to the sun, who's our father? You want to talk to the earth, who's our mother? Or do you want to talk to your own heart? And, and in their own writings, in their own European writings, he jumped back and he said, no. We have a disease of the soul that can only be cured with gold. No, that's what he wanted. That's what he wanted. That's what he wanted. The gold. Here, in this land, nobody killed for gold. Nobody died for gold. It was a precious metal that we used very quickly. But our grandfather responded. That's, that's a tragedy because we have a treasure more precious than the metal the sun sweats that has you crazy, but you're not ready to begin to understand. In other words, there's a treasure more precious than the metal the sun sweats that has you crazy, but you're not ready to begin to understand. And he never said another word. Okay, never said another word. In the history books, they talk about that he was tortured, that they burned his feet, and they tortured him. But they don't tell the whole truth or complete truth. Because they didn't kill him that day or that year. They didn't kill him that day or that year. They take him with them everywhere they went as they were attacking other, other, other populations because they had a spokesperson, okay? And they took him with them. They never, never, they didn't kill him at that time. Eventually, eventually, they hung him, okay? They hung him, they burned him, they multiple stab wounds, burned, hung him upside down, and they lifted him. You know? Our people took him down and returned him back to Mexico, okay? Hiding him all along the way. And today, he lays in state in a glass coffin in the city where his mother was born. In, 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 uh, it's called Xcachopan Guerrero. He lays there in a glass coffin. And we go there every year to do honors to him for his birthday and also for when the day they pass away. But this young man was Cuauhtémoc, okay? He was the last spokesperson of our tribe. It happened on this day. Today the 23rd, but actually, astronomically, it's as if it was the 13th. 
of August of 1521. So every year we commemorate that because he's the one that left us a message that one day the sun will shine on us again. One day the sun will look down and see dignified to return to us again. And that's where we've been stuck. We've been stuck in that one little spot where it says it will be dignified to return to us again. Okay? Because the sun is like a good father that gives light and warmth to everything and everybody in life. And the earth is like a good mother that gives us food, clothing, and shelter to everybody and everything in life. And so until we get back into that place and we can recognize the son as a father, like they're not religiously, not a God, you know, but just like a good father, like my good brother right here. I'm real amazed with you, too, hot. I want to thank you and I want to honor you because all this time, you know, yesterday and all this time, you had your kids with you. And you've been dealing with all these other kids around you, <laughs> myself included, you know, okay? But yeah, you've been taking care of us because like a good father, they get light and more so we can see where we're going. See, in other words, we got to get back to that point again. And I believe, and, and I share with you, that some of you might not be uh, familiar with what we call the Aztec calendar. But the Aztec calendar is the culmination of thousands of years by thousands of people across thousands of miles of patient and careful and respectful observation of nature, the cosmos, and everything that's around us. And so today, we need to use that cosmic identity because that cosmic identity has no bearing on the color of your skin or your eyes or your hair. Or where you're from here, from there, whatever, your, your language, your religion, that's all beautiful and that's all great. That's all who you are. But that's not what it's about. It's about when did you take your breath? When did you take the first breath of life? When did you first come upon your, your mission? I mean, yeah. And we all got a mission. So I th thank you for the opportunity you know, to say this because I want to share this because this calendar is your calendar, you know, is your calendar. Our ancestors in Mexico never, 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 never said only Montecosuma or Guatemoc or Masatin or Pancho Villa or somebody with a mustache. They never said that. You know, you know, they said, when you took your breath of life, you came upon this earth and you became part of the rest of, you know. So we all got to get back to that one point again where we all feel like really, really, really mean it. I know we all, I believe that everybody here feels that anyway, that we're all brothers and sisters. Really, man. And we're naked, really. Naked, real, you know? That's all it's about. So, for Tlaxcamati on this day, on this day, the today, by the way, is the day of the skull. He keeps me the skull. And it represents trans. We're the day of transformation. So, Tlaxcamati with me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.